little jingle. You know what I mean? This is draw talk. We need a hook set. There you go. Slack line. Yeah, it's exactly the rod <laughs> snapping in half. Right. Son of a. I'm, I'm pretty sure Brennan could uh, get get you a couple of those. Jared could get you a couple of those, no, man. I, guess you're right. I can't tell you how many fish Jared misses, and all of a sudden he's just like mother. He's reeling into slack. <laughs> I was like, God, I hate missing fish. I'm like, well, it happened. What was it? Brendan broke like four or five rods last year. Well, Jerry broke one of mine. Okay. Setting a hook on a stump. I've broke a couple of rods, all right? I think I've broke two of uh, Colby's. I have, uh, well, it's not wood, but I, luckily I haven't, uh, haven't broke some off. Uh, or broke rods. Yeah, it's going to happen. So I... Uh, I broke quality rods. I broke Colby's. I broke a rod. <laughs> high quality rod. I just needed. I just needed one for that weekend, and I was like, "You'll do." Yeah. So look, I broke a, a rod that Colby let me borrow. Hmm. That somebody else let him borrow. Ooh. <laughs> the go, the green ghost. Remember? No, that was mine. Oh, that was yours. Yeah, I, yeah. Thought, I thought it was Matt Swift's. No, that was the rod that I snapped. Oh, so you. I broke, broke Matt's. Matt's. And, and then I. Broke I yours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you should have just blamed it on Jerry. No, I was a. Uh, we, he and I, we were going to go fish, I think it was Nacogdoches or whatever, and I had just gotten a reel, and I was like, well, I think I ordered a rod. I think I ordered a Jacob Wheeler, and it hadn't come in yet, so I just went and picked up one from Academy, and I was like, it'll do. And then Jared, like, we fished that Saturday, I sent it home with Jared, and then sure enough, like, the next day, he was like, hey, I broke it. I was like, thanks, man. No, so I was on Nacogdoches, and I had just bought a big spoon for the first time. Oh, yeah. You know, all those guys on Nacogdoches, live scoping with the big spoon, I was like, I'm going to go out and do it. So go to the uh, the pylons yeah. next to the power lines, yeah. and I'm just go over there, you know, popping this big spoon around, and I get hung up on. I didn't know I was hung up. I really thought I'd, you know, like I'm popping it around, and like I popped it into one of the the ropes or something, oh, or yeah. the cables below it, and like so I built it and I just just snapped. Like I set the hook as hard as I could, and it oh. just snap. It was a ducket rod. Oh, let's so do it. it. Yeah, so, I was about to say. I still have that blank. I still have that one snapped in half. Really? Yeah. Did they send you another one? <laughs> I never... You never did it? No. It wasn't worth it. It was like 50 bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's not worth the shipping fee. Shipping was For half real. that. I know. That's like like uh, Denali. They'll cover you know any rods or anything like that. If you break them or break an eye off, they'll cover it, but you have to pay for shipping. Yeah. And it's like, why? Like, might as well just buy a new rod. Dude, well, like I have the Jay Wheeler edition, like my 7.6 Heavy that I used to use for frogging, but like the inlet... Like, the inlay of my eye uh-huh. on my tip is, like, at the bottom of it is broke. Yeah, it's chipped or whatever. Yeah, and I cannot for the life of me figure out what size eye that is. And it frays, to replace it frays it. your line. Like yeah. dude, I've, yeah. had, I've had three Jacob Wheeler rods, and every one has done the exact same thing. That's the only one that's happened to me. Like, I use... I had one. I had one. It was two years ago on Fairfield. And I asked Dylan, I said, hey, can we fix this? I have, like, a, a handful of eyes. And he's like, yeah, we can fix that. I said, well, what's the easiest way to get it, you know, off and um, and fix it? He said, this right here. And he put it on the edge of the sink and went, bam! <laughs> I said, fair enough. That is not, yeah. Dude, Dylan is, uh, that dude's crazy, man. We need to have him on we do. on the pet, the podcast. We need to do that on a weekend, though, to where it's start at noon. We'll get done about midnight. There yeah. you go. The man's got enough. All the stories Jesus and everything. Christ. Yeah. Even if we had a podcast of like the the group of guys, the like main group of guys. Yeah, we'll uh, definitely set up some group group podcasts. That'd yeah, be fun. but if when we you had, get too many people, it starts to be like yeah. Too, too if much, we but. if we had one of those, it would probably go on for a while. Dude, we'll just do an aerial view. We'll just have the camera up here, and we're all sitting in a circle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There'll be like eight guys, and two of them don't even ever get to. Well, talk. like it's summer, like uh, Cedar Creek last year. You know, we had that doc. That would there. have been that would have been a good that was cool yeah. a good you the know, wind area. whipping through there yeah I think he posted that one still oh yeah I did yeah just, it's like hey guys <laughs> just Dude, wind so, in the background so at Cho Canyon the first championship oh, golly. it was so windy and like I'm trying to like I'm wanting to do interviews after after Chandler and Austin won oh um, yeah with me so, my dad Chandler and well, I did you Austin, and your dad, and yeah. then I did Chandler and Austin. I wanted oh, to do some wind interviews. Was so you know? bad. The wind was so bad, and we're like yelling, and like you could barely hear what we were saying in the video. That's still, <laughs> I still put them in the video. Yeah, gotta have something, you know. Right. I mean, it was Choke Canyon was probably one of the funnest tournaments yeah. 
That was I really did. It was the biggest. It was the biggest bag I've ever weighed. Me and my dad both, and he's been fishing early nineties. Yeah, y'all weighed twenty five pounds on the first day, right? Yeah, almost. Was it twenty four something, right? Yeah, twenty four something. Big change from season one to season two. I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> I know. What you I, weigh in on the uh, Lake of the Pines? Lake of the Pines. Oh. I don't know. I broke. I broke a couple off. I know that. Day one, eight four. Day two, eleven. Yeah. I found a I found a good spot on Lake of the Ponds the second day. Uh, well, actually, I found it the end of the first day, and we fished maybe twenty minutes and got a fish or two fish, something like that. And um, we were still finding fish on beds out there, or the, at least they were like locked in shallow, like bluegill beds or something. They were locked in on something, really? and. Uh, and then I think Ron ended up catching one of them uh, that we sat on for an hour trying to catch. It was like a three and a half pounder. Dang, dude. And Ron ended up catching one, or that one. Oh, Look at uh, the pods was fun. Huh? Look at the pods was fun. Bro. Yeah. But I had I had a dude that was fishing. It was it was next to a, a bridge. And um, there was I was on one side and the, a guy was on the other side. He ended up catching like a seven and a half pounder. Threw it back. He wasn't fishing our tournament or anything. And he threw it back. And then I ended up hooked into one. I don't know if it was on camera or not. But I hooked into one. And it came up. And the crankbait came skipping across the water. And I was like, mm. son of a gun. And then I had another one that it started pulling drag. And I could feel it like it was caught with something. And it just cut my line right off. So, oh well. Man, dude. All right, well, I guess we need to get into this introduction that we haven't done yet. <laughs> Put a bookmark there real quick. What's wrong? Oh, yeah. Just so I can see yeah. if one of us are leaning in or leaning in. You know what I mean? We couldn't see ourselves. Yeah, we can. Or if it's recording or not. Yeah, we can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if that wouldn't have been recording, I mean. We would have been here for 20 minutes, you know. Yeah, good, good introduction, but all right. That was fine. All right, guys, so my name is Jared Cry, and this is Colby Arnold, and we're with Draw Talk Podcast. We have a special guest on today, uh, Zachary Ansley. He, uh, he's a good friend. He, uh, he's a good employee. He works for ASAP HVAC, and uh, I wish I could say he was a better fisherman, mm. but I just can't. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty good in pre-fishing, but... Uh... Oh, yeah, he can catch... He can, he's the practice king. He wins yeah. every practice he's ever fished. Yeah. You yeah. try this not pre fishing one day. I, you know, I thought about it. Yeah, <laughs> thought about it. Take he like he just likes being on the boat too much to not yeah, practice. Nah, nah. Yeah, well, he's like I have an excuse to get off of work now. So right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. That's it. Cool, man. Well, um, so he's fished every look of the draw tournament so far, right? Have you missed any? No. No, not a one. Not a one. We've uh, this we just finished up our second season. We're about to start our third out on uh, Cedar Creek in uh, nine days. Nine days, so a week from today, we're going to be out on the, uh, well, me and Zach will, and Colby won't, but yeah. we're going to be out on the water pre-fishing for the first uh, first stop on Cedar Creek. Looking um, forward to it. Yeah, man. Uh, what, uh, let's go, let's just go back to la- a year from now. This, and it's crazy, because we're actually fishing Cedar Creek on the exact same weekend this year as we did last year. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Because we're starting a, a, a month later. Yeah. Yeah. We're starting a month later, yeah. So yeah. last year we fished Cedar Creek, our second tournament of the year. Yeah. And we fished Belton last month, last right. year. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Belton was terrible. Yeah. <sighs> no. Belton, Belton was fun. Definitely fun. Uh, we, uh, let's see. We, that was my first time ever catching smallmouth fish. So. Uh, I I say the same. Yeah. Yeah. Zach and Colby actually fished together on Belton. Yeah, and uh, we let's see. You had a pretty good practice. I didn't with Jared. I didn't right? practice. Those a few week. Those, those a few, a few weekends, weekends before. before. Yeah, I was about oh, to say okay. we just went up there just to go Goof, on the weekend. Goofing off, yeah. And then you caught that one. I don't know what it weighed, like five and a half or something. Four. Close, whatever. close to it. I don't even remember. Yeah. But uh, but then you know I went up there and I think my first time up there I caught everything. Uh, Except for a largemouth bass, I caught like little bluegills on a jerk bait. I caught uh, smallmouth. I caught goose, watts, 
whatever. And I didn't catch a large mouth out there at all. <laughs> so we didn't catch a large mouth at all. No, we caught some fish. I'm gonna say they were all just small mouths. Though, yeah, we no, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. We caught yeah. some fish right there by the boat ramp. Yeah, but they were all little bitty things. And then let's see. When I practiced with my dad, we went up, we went all the way up to the bridge, and uh, we ended up getting into a nice group of fish. Um, they were like schooling on a point. Um, and then I went back, looked at them on the day before the tournament, and they were still there. I caught one, I think it was, so I left it. And then uh, we went up there, and there was it was dead. It, it's totally different. I think it rained like uh, a couple days before our tournament, uh, and the water was totally off colored, and uh, we we went everywhere on that lake. Man, um, yeah, Belton was a difficult one. Like uh, I think in practice, I mean it, it varied, but like the actual practice, a couple days before the tournament, mm-hmm. we did not do well at all. Yeah. And uh, we finally this and th- just such a no. This was a spark to my my underspin addiction. Mm, yeah. Uh, so Dylan, we were we were throwing around just worms and just normal crankbait stuff like that, and then Dylan told me um, to tie on an underspin. He's like, "Hey man, have you tried to underspin?" Because he had been catching some, which come to find out, he was catching them on rattle traps. Yeah. But he was like, "Did you did you tie to try to underspin?" I was like, "No." So I tied on the little underspin. Um, with the little, uh, what is it? The six cents, uh, divine, divine swim bait on it. Yeah. And dude, I started, we started catching fish, nothing crazy. And then the, the next day of the day of the tournament is when we caught that three and a half small mouth. Mm-hmm. That's what got me hooked on that thing. And then that carried over into to, to Cedar Creek. We caught that a carried lot. carried in for the rest of the year. I think I, I really, I caught big fish on that, you know, oh, I, I think every big fish I caught that this year was on that. Yeah. So... I don't know if I should have gave that secret up, but I mean, I have videos all over me catching fish on it, so it's really not a secret. <laughs> saying, I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm just bouncing back from yeah. your boat to his boat, yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. Isn't yes, that sir. what you got to hit in the back with, too? Oh, oh yeah. Bait, wasn't it? No, no, no. No, Brendan, <laughs> dude, on Belton, after I caught that three and a half, so Brendan was like, oh, I'll tie one on, too. So he tied one on. Well, he set the hook, and I'm up at the front, and I'll, I'll see if I can put the video in, and I'll show you later. But we're just, I'm just kind of cruising along, trying to fish, and then all of a sudden, I hear a hook set, and then I feel something hit me in the back, like as hard as it possibly could, just, pow! I was like, oh, you know, and then I raised my shirt up, and there's this, like, huge oh, red yeah. welt on the, my back. Yeah. Dude, in Florida, when we were fishing uh, Ida, yeah. we were throwing those frogs in that little canal. Oh, my gosh. Dude, he set the hook on one, and it had it for a good second, and then it spit it, and it was just... Mm. Right here in like the meat, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. And I lifted my shirt up, and you can see like the, uh, the outline of the frog. Yeah, <laughs> like like the skirt. T- yeah, <laughs> that's the like you can see the fi- like the fibers, and I was like, damn, that hurt, dude. So we went to um, and and you know we went to Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. We went and fished. Um, we just all of a sudden, like, what do we say? We were like, hey, we really would like to fish in Florida, and then I'm like, well. I, you know, or no, you said, well, I'm like on break next. Uh, no, I had just graduated. Oh, you just like, graduated. I, had just gradu- I graduated yeah. on that Friday. I had like my little grad party or whatever on that Saturday. And that's whenever we planned it. Like we planned it that Saturday and left Monday. Yeah. Yeah. He had just graduated college and was like, well, and I was like, well, let's go fishing in Florida. <laughs> like, that was a perfect time. <laughs> so we just up and left and went to Florida and drove down there. We did not stop until we got to Tallahassee. Yeah. And then we... And it was right around the time that all that gas, uh, yeah, the yeah. gas price thing, where everybody, like, they were shutting down gas stations at, like, 11 and not letting people get gas in the middle of the night. And we didn't know this. And so we were, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. We had to, like, we were on fumes trying to find a gas station that would let us start have gas. sucking gas out the boat. <laughs> well, we, we tried to <laughs> carry the boat down there as empty as we could. Oh. Yeah, we were like, yeah, we don't want to put a lot of weight in the right, boat, you yeah. know, so we, like, Ran, you know, made sure it didn't have that much gas in it. Yeah. It and was, uh, luckily, we found a place. It was eventful. Then we but, went to Lake Okeechobee for a day or two. We went down to Lake Ida and fished some canals, like going like south towards Miami and all that. Yeah, pulling a boat through Miami is not fun. Uh, yeah. Not ideal. No. I want to do it again. 
Oh, I mean, I'm down. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. At this time, though, I'd rather just fly. Like, I'd rather just fly. Get a guide or something down no, there. No, I, I mean, you can put me in a kayak for all I care. Ida's not that big. Oh, yeah. Dude, running those canals in a boat, though. It's fun. Oh, fun. yeah. When when I went down there to Florida, uh, Casey got a guide for me. And uh, we we went through some of the cal- canals on Okeechobee, and then we went around the, the rim of the lake. And then, um, I mean, it was sweet. Um, I think they were having some big tournament, big local tournament out of there that day, or high school tournament, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, it was sweet. Dude, that was one thing. Is like, uh, I don't know, me and you, we went out there and didn't know. Didn't know anything about Florida fishing. No, well, this guy Brad just got fishing. his boat, big center console. Well, it's a flat boat. It was a big center console, and uh, I think it was like a blazer or something. And... He had no graphs on it. He's a cool dude, but he had no graphs. He's like, yeah, I've been guiding ever since I, I could guide. Right. And he's like, I just got a new boat. I said, okay, sweet. You know, cool. Whatever. Heck so yeah. we start hauling, but Dude, and they're going pitch crazy black. through there. Yeah, I about to say. Pitch black. And he's like, I know where I'm going. I'm like, whatever, dude. Yeah. That's some. That's how I feel sometimes with Jared driving. <laughs> Bro. We'll be getting off the water and it's pitch black outside, or we'll be going to some spot and it's pitch black outside. And I'm like, well, at this point, I just won't know whenever I die. Yeah, like, that's it. That's we it. haven't yeah. died yet. I tell you what, whenever <laughs> what me, you, and Chandler fish the Big Bass Splash in, what was it, October or something? Yeah, this is like right hurricane. when I first got my boat. Yeah. yeah, the hurricane was coming through in Louisiana. I don't know what hurricane it was or whatever. Hurricane Delta. Yeah, yeah. Coming through, the lake was absolutely crazy, and we uh, we were coming, I don't remember, we launched out of Castle Boy Cannon, and I went the long way around, and uh, I went down the bridge, and then up the long cut, and uh, I was looking at my graph, but I could see trees going past me, and I was like, okay, okay, and then I went the same path uh, when I left, I went the same path out. And I was like a little bit out of the cut, but I got some pretty, uh, I got some boat lanes on there that uh, I know you won't run. I won't run anything that you might run. <laughs> Through the canyons to the deer stand? Yeah, no. That's, that's, uh, that's a fun one. That's some sketchy stuff, man. That's a fun yeah, one. I'll ride it with you, but I ain't yeah, gonna run it myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Cedar Creek, man. That's what we're coming up in. Uh, that's what the the second tournament of, of the year was last year. What uh just what what was your experience last year? I can't. What did Kobe? What did he weigh in? Uh, like four oh, fish or something like looking that. Looking at Belton, yeah, they had four for eight one. Yeah, four for so, eight pounds. So not 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 terribly hot, huh? Yeah, like, no. consistent though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, so you know, going there that was my second time ever being there. Yep. Um, because we went. Before you ever got a boat, when we went up to... I don't really don't even count that, bro, because we literally stopped for like 30 minutes. We did. And we just drove around. We did, I don't even remember fishing. We might have fished like five docks. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because we found that, that house right there by the bridge. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I don't, really don't remember it. But uh, uh, last year, I found... Uh, good school, let's see, on the side of a dock uh, in practice. And then uh, we went back the, the next morning, which was tournament day. And I think I caught a couple on a jerk bait out there. And then um, my dad ended up, I don't know, he hooked into something um, something big. Um, but he flipped up, up underneath the dock. And uh, we were looking, we were looking around. And... Uh, He's like, there's one. And he sets the hook and starts pulling drag. And he's like, I don't have a clue what I got. And he's like, go over there right now. So we go over there. And I'm leaning off the front of the boat trying to find his line. And uh, I'm pulling like a Christmas tree up and moving it out of the way, a branch. And um, it, I guess it it, it, it came off or yeah, whatever. It got, hung, it got wrapped in the yeah. bush pile. So, I remember that video. That so was, it's on the YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. I, say, I remember yeah. seeing that. That was yeah. that, and you could tell, dude. Like you could oh, tell yeah. in the video, yeah, he had a big fish on. Oh, him. he did it, most definitely. He's like, yeah. he's like, 
you know, just to, you know, better myself, I'm going to think it was a catfish. And, <laughs> no. And he's like... I don't think it was a catfish. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it was, whatever it was, was, it was definitely a yeah. big fish. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Curtis, you lost a pretty big bass right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it was, it was... <laughs> That's yeah. every fish Jared loses, man. If he breaks off or if he, like, misses a hook set, I'm like, yeah, it's probably a squeak. Oh, he yeah. was like, no, 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 it was no. big. I was like, you can't even see it, dude. Like, That's okay. I could just tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell. then... So, me and my dad went out last week, and we practiced. Um, this year, I'm running Mega 360 and Mega Live, so I just got live imaging. Um, so, we can see how that goes. Um, new, i got to learn a new technology. Uh, but, um, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, when we went out, uh, we fished some, some brush piles. Uh, we were able to see everything on the brush pile, but, um, it's, it's definitely different when you can see all the stuff down there, um, and you can see what follows your bait and how much stuff, like, you, you can't, like, even though it's, yeah, even though it's following, I think it makes me, like, I think it's going to make me more aggravated that I see stuff following my bait and not biting at my bait that man that man right there oh yeah dude he'll get on a school of fish and follow it for like 45 minutes and i'm sometimes i'm on the front sometimes I'm on the back it just kind of depends on yeah. what i'm feeling that day and i'll just be blind casting i'm like well we're in 20 foot of water i'm just gonna keep throwing this crankbait yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <long> <laughs> there. yeah i'm like i'll just throw this little square bill that only yeah. goes down to three feet right and jared's like no i'll get one no, that never happens. But dude, we uh, I've caught a couple of scoping them. Yeah, Not a lot. A couple. Yeah, never in a tournament really. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of important. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it. Fun fishing a few right, times. Right, right. Not where it counts. Though. I'm not a good. I'm not a good live scoper. That's at okay. all. No man, I, was like, I, I use a live scope more for finding grass lines, being able to cast directly at the brush pile. Mm-hmm. Um, not really for targeting individual fish. Like I have done it before. Very few times have I been successful. Man, you you definitely watching these guys like Josh Jones and Milliken and um, a couple of the pros. Like um, you definitely have to stay on your trolling motor all day long, and you cannot. If you take your foot off of it, it should be only when you leave to go to the next spot or go. Um, you know, flip a fish in or something, but did you watch the Zaldane podcast that just I came did. out? I did, but I mean, Josh. I, I mean, Josh Jones said it right there. Yeah, he did. If you get off your trolling motor, then you you're you're lost. You know, dude, you, but the, yep. he was crazy. like, he was like, dude, I watch these pros on live, and they're like he's scoping critiquing. around. He's critiquing them like, oh, there you went. You took your foot off the pedal. Like you're never supposed to take your foot off the pedal. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I don't know. I just see. Ben Milliken, for instance, I watched a YouTube video of him. Like, I think I was on his first day of the uh, of the open. He's already got rid of three sixty, and he's put two per, he's put two Garmin's on his bow. That's wild. But he was pulling up to the spot, and he was like, "Yeah, there was a big fish here yesterday. Like, it's still if it's here," and just throws one of those draws up there, pulls out an eight and a half pounder. Yeah. I'm like, that never happens. Like, that never happens right. to us. <laughs> like, yeah. If I catch an eight and a half pounder, it's just blind luck, right? right? Yeah. But I definitely, so back to Cedar Creek, because uh, forward-facing sonar is a whole different, it's a new topic now that, oh, well, is it banned or should it be banned and blah, blah, blah. But that's a whole nother, like, yeah season. <laughs> you could go on days and days about talking about that. But uh, Cedar Creek, it's it's low, not like it was last year. Uh, Last year was like six feet low. I think yeah. this year it's maybe three. Yeah, but right. we just got Dallas got like three inches of rain. So supposedly they were going to get like three inches of rain from yesterday and today. Uh, so I definitely think that's going to bring the lake up. Um, but you know, from last year we were able to see everything that was underneath the docks, um, and we were able to mark all that stuff. Uh, whether they had, you know. Um, different fish attraction, different fish attraction, um, uh, under their dock or next to their dock or something like that. Um, you know, we're able to 
to see, you know, the, well, this dog's got a Christmas tree or whatever um, underneath it or a five-gallon bucket with some PVC in it, whatever. But um, I think I think that helped as far as narrowing down what docks to go to and what docks you can skip. Um, because if you, if you develop a pattern, say, the Friday before the tournament, you say, okay, well, I fished 10 docks, six... Well, eight of the docks had stuff underneath it. Right. And then the other three or four, two or whatever um, don't have anything underneath it. And then, you know, you go from there. You can you can narrow all your stuff down regardless if you have 360 or live sonar or whatever. You can narrow it down. Um, but, or, you know, boat ramps or something like that. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh- this never really came up. This never really did anything for me in the tournament last year at Cedar Creek. Um, and I'll tell you the story. It kind of Dylan screwed us up. I probably could have had a bigger bag if Dylan wouldn't have screwed me up. Because <laughs> um, I, I started listening to the doc talk. You know, oh, yeah, like, yeah. But anyway. Everyone was saying this is going to play out exactly like Conroe. Is if you find the brush pile or if you find the right dogs. And... Last year, I don't think that was the case. This year, it, so, could, it could be totally different. Yeah, who knows, man. And I've kind of learned to not listen to all that anymore. But, like, what what happened last year was, uh, oh, but in practice, I found, because I was still throwing my, my underspin around, mm-hmm. I just came off of Cedar uh, Bilton where I'd caught some nice fish doing that. So I still had that in my head, right, um, for good reason. And so I'm throwing that around, and then I noticed every little, like, private boat ramp or really any concrete that I would throw to would always have a fish on it. Like, right. literally every single one. They weren't, no, they weren't always big fish, usually like a pound and a half, two pound fish, right? Um, but we caught one like that, and I was like, cool, you know. Like a concrete bulkhead or Concrete like bulkhead, concrete pillars, or like, most of the time, like, there's some private like boat ramps for the house mm. right and it's just like a little shallow yeah, yeah and you can't even like we went out there the other day and i really didn't see very many you could really see them good whenever the lake was low like that mm-hmm. uh and then i was catching fish off of those but then um, I, you know that that also is going to come in play is with 360 if you have it you know you can yeah. see those boat ramps coming out yeah for um, sure i mean you could see the hard bottoms and yeah. stuff on live but so i i developed a little pattern like i knew i could catch a limit of two to two and a half pounders, mm-hmm. right? Maybe throwing a three pounder. Like in practice, I'd kind of figured that part out. Well, <clears throat> Dylan got on this bite in practice that was pretty good, but he was throwing around these little crawls, like mm-hmm. these little green pumpkin crawls, and it was um, throwing up to these certain types of docks and with and certain types of dock posts, and he was catching more the better size. Like <clears throat> he caught, you know almost 17 pounds in practice right. doing that like three and four pounders pretty consistently well he got in my ear about that so and and brendan ended up fishing about half a day of practice yeah, with dylan that. yeah because yeah. we were and, all right and there. brendan we were yeah. all right there uh, and brendan was spot. fishing with dylan yeah. they were catching them and and brendan saw what dylan was doing he's like hey bro we need to do, be doing this kind of stuff you know mm-hmm. so it he convinced me to do that the morning of the tournament and I had no practice in even doing that. And so we did it, and it started off pretty good. We caught four fish pretty early, but they were not big. We had four fish for like seven pounds, you know. And then we went through a really dry spell all day. And I was like, you know what, screw this. I'm picking up my underspin. And we are just we just started going to run in wind-blown, wind-blown docks. And so I ended up catching the, the five-and-a-half and the four-and-a-half, and, and we called a couple more times. I think ended up... We ended up having what sixteen seven almost seventeen pounds. Uh, sixteen nine. So, yeah. Sixteen nine. We had yeah, so we had seventeen pounds, and uh, I think I could have caught a couple bigger ones if I wouldn't mm-hmm. have listened to him. And then November, switching things up, and then going down to Conroe, Ooh. to where oh, yeah. Were, yeah, Conroe was rough that day. Conroe was definitely rough. The the uh, I went. Let's see. I went October 17th and caught caught some pretty good fish. And uh, then the day before uh, the tournament, it was, it was, I mean, the wind was blowing some. And I think I was fishing with Chandler. 
And then uh, our – what was that? I don't think I was fishing with Chandler. I don't remember. I was fishing with somebody, and they were going to leave, so I dropped them off at the boat ramp. And then I went back out, and um, I went back out to a deep spot, and uh, the wind just started picking up, like blowing. And um, I threw a 6XD out there and just kind of blind, blind cast. I knew where the brush pile was, and I just threw out there. And uh, I probably didn't get 10 cranks in it. And uh, I ended up catching like a six and a half. And got him to the boat. And then um, he ended up having uh, some kind of, he swallowed some kind of other fish. He had a tail sticking out of his throat. Dang. And uh, so then the day of the tournament, I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll go there. And, uh, you know, we can fish that spot. Well, the wind never slacked up, and I was like... Not a bit, dude. No. I was like, you know what? We ain't even fishing that spot. And then uh, we went to, like, a protected cove, and I ended up catching some on a spinnerbait, and uh, then I think we flipped a couple of docks and caught... I ended up losing one right on the dock at the end of the day. But I just remember Conroe being cold, man. Oh uh, yeah, it I, definitely. It's so cold. It definitely like the day. Freezing. The day before wasn't terrible, but that front, front was coming through. Yep. And then the next day it was like, real cold. Because uh, I'm pretty positive this was, November twelfth. Yeah. So that was the day that that front blew in. Whenever we were at a football game. Oh in yeah. Brenham. yeah. So I had to come back from Brenham, to the school. From the school to Dowdell's house in Conroe, slept for like two hours and then got up and then fished that tournament. Oh, yeah. And, dude, I mean, we only weighed in one fish. Bro, that, so we I, we both spent the night at uh, Dylan's house, right? Yeah. So I was there obviously way before you were, and I went to sleep, and I slept in uh, in Luke's bed, right? <laughs> and, dude, that bed is the hardest freaking bed. Like, He's the a kids, toddler. The kid sleeps on a plywood sheet, I think. Your feet hanging off the edge or something? Yeah. Which, no. This is the worker up. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, so anyway, and then Colby gets there in like the middle of the night because he's having to drive all the way from football, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so Dylan, uh, we give him the codes and just tell him, hey man, just walk in. Yeah. And just, you know, because everybody's going to be asleep. And it's like 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. And Colby says he comes in, he's like trying to be real quiet and he's like, Putting his stuff down, he's about to get on the couch. He said, "Dylan like comes out in his underwear, and he's like, hey, bro, you ready to party?'" <laughs> <laughs> Man, Dylan, Dylan's crazy because, yeah. uh, you know, we could go to the next tournament where we fished Somerville, mm-hmm. and we got uh, we got that room on the lake, right? It was me, you, and Dylan, and um, we stayed right on the lake. And uh, I think Dylan had an air mattress, and he told us we could stay in the beds or something like that. Mm-hmm. So me and you were sleeping in separate beds, and he had the air mattress. And I think I think he stayed on the marketplace for the majority of the night because every time I looked down there, I could see his phone lit up on the marketplace, <laughs> and he was scrolling for a boat or something. <laughs> and uh, and that, dude, they didn't have a heater in this cabin, I don't think. No, they had floor heaters. Floor, and they didn't work with the. No, shit, not man. at all. Where's not at all. Somerville. Somerville. Oh, God. So, uh, so Dylan wakes up. Um, I don't know, probably three o'clock or gets up. I don't even know if he slept any, but he gets up at like three o'clock, two o'clock, or whatever. And I look over, and he's. He took his blanket that he had, and he's tucking Jared in. He put another blanket over him, and he's tucking Jared in. So I'm, like, dead asleep in the middle of the night, and it's cold as shit, bro. So I'm already, like, trying to get as much cover as I can, and I'm just, like, huddled up. Dylan, like, doesn't go to sleep until 2 in the morning, wakes up at 3.30 in the morning, and he's, like, letting all the air out of his air mattress at 3.30 in the morning. Oh, yeah, not quiet at all. Not the quiet. Pump on, just... The pump, like, letting the air out. And then, like, did next you, thing I know, I feel a blanket get a, go across me and then, like, <laughs> tuck it in on the sides. And I'm like, all right, thank you. So then he comes over, and I'm awake because I'm, I'm like, man, it is real noisy. And he's... He gives me his other blanket, and he's tucking me in. 
I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm, I'm going to go get something to eat and uh, go to the boat ramp. Or might just go to the boat ramp. I don't know. Go chill at the boat ramp. I was like, what? Dude, he's, he's like, yeah, I'm just going to go launch the boat. Graph around some, maybe. He graphed around from like four in the morning yeah. until uh, this was this wasn't uh, this wasn't the day of the tournament. This was during, during practice still, and he graphed around from four thirty in the morning. And I don't think we got off the water until way late oh, that dude. night. And then we no. went to eat Mexican food. Was it that day? I thought y'all left. Oh, we did leave. Y'all no. left, and y'all went to Fairfield. No, Dylan was like, "Screw this place." He's like, let's go to Fayette. Oh, yeah, Because it's right down the road. That's right. Yeah. And then so me and him load up and go to Fayette. And then... That's when he hits me in the head yeah, with yeah. a chatterbait. Yeah, like yeah. a half-ounce chatterbait just slams me in the ear, bro. And then the video, he's like... He does it. And I'm like leaning over. He's like, you all right? And I was like, yeah. And he starts just picking out his backlash like he does it. He's like, hurts like a bitch, huh? <laughs> Dude, that video got so much... And comments like this is why you don't stand two on the yeah. front deck. Like, yeah, we know, we know. It's the yeah. price you pay. Yeah, and then how many gay comments did we get for standing on the front deck together? <laughs> oh, like, dude. it's gay to stand next to somebody. Yeah, one guy named Don Monster yeah. was the guy that was like, oh, oh, look at these homos, the homosexual standing two in the front of the boat. I was like, what? All right, like, Don not Monster. Like, Don Monster, come on now. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So then y'all were at Fayette or Fairfield. Fayette. Fayette, and I call y'all. I think you didn't answer or something like that. And I called Dylan. He's like, hey, and I'm sending y'all a picture of uh, this fish in the live well. So I'm on this one long stretch of bank, and there's a brush pile. And I throw a 6XD up to it, and uh, I catch a little fish. I mean, he's a keeper, but I was like, okay, whatever. So then I throw him out, and I'm like, well, you know, if I get two fish, then I'll leave this spot or whatever. So... I throw back out there, and I'm reeling, and I feel it hit the top of the brush pile, uh, or the ground, or whatever it hit out there, but it went boom, boom, and then a thud, and I was like, oh, man, what in the world do I have? Well, I knew it wasn't catfish, uh, I knew it wasn't a catfish or anything, because I watched my line start coming up out of the water, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is going to be a bass, so he's about to jump. And he jumps, and I'm like, "Holy cow! This is the biggest bass I've ever, I've ever hooked." All right, everybody, and we're back. We're back. We had a little, little technical, di- uh, technical difficulties. There we go. That's it. Um, so to start over, this is Jared with Lo- uh, <laughs> Jaw Talk Podcast. Jaw Talk. Now, uh, what were we talking about, guys? Uh, we were talking about. Uh, let's see. My big fish on Somerville. On Somerville. Yeah. And then uh, the day of the tournament, I went to one spot. Yeah, let's just recap that. And uh, sat on one spot all day long. Yeah. Because I was ready to catch that big one again. And how many 6XDs did we lose? Um, so there's a gas station right before Somerville when you turn off a, what's that, 290 or whatever? Couldn't tell you. Um, yeah. It's a shell gas station. And they got a bunch of crank, they got a bunch of baits in there. And they had some Normans, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I could. That's a pretty sweet color. I could use that one too." So I think I ended up losing five, five, six XDs, two Normans, and I don't know, a handful of some other baits, maybe one XD or one uh, eight XD. So if you're in, uh, how much money do you think you lost in that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So That's, if you're, uh, we'll go ahead and tell Casey right now. Yeah, how about we don't. <laughs> no, okay. So if you're on like Somerville and you happen to pull up to a a point with yeah. a brush pile, yeah. Just and I was that. hoping, like, I was wanting to go back after the tournament ended and see what was on the bank, because <laughs> what got what? Yeah, yeah, what ended up coming undone, or I broke the line, and that would have been funny. Uh, they were just floating up against the bank. That would have been cool to you should pick have. those. I've done that before, dude. Get hung up in a brush pile, break off, and then oh, like yeah, 10 yeah. minutes later, you see the crankbait just come to the top. Yeah, no. I, yeah, and that's why I was kind of waiting. Um, that's why you spent 10 hours there. Yeah, <laughs> not, yeah. not for the best. I caught I call the... one. I caught one that it looked like somebody took, I don't know, like, uh, like he got hit with a propeller or something. Tried to bite at him, but he was missing like the front half, the front left side of his face and jaw. 
and like something just took a bite out of them. And uh, I was like, dude, all I got to do is have, you know, part of your mouth closed. I don't care about the rest of it. So <laughs> should have waited in. Did you wait? I, I did wait. I was. I think I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was. Uh, he was a little dumb looking. Probably can't say retarded, but. <laughs> As you say it, bro. Yeah. We'll edit that Ron out. said. Ron said it twice. <laughs> Ron said it so many times. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But yeah, uh, I sat on that one spot, and then uh, uh, it definitely sucked. Uh, I totally changed up what I was doing. Um, I was throwing a Carolina rig, and I think I ended up catching. All of my fish on a Carolina rig, maybe one on a. Oh, Colby, I caught one on a jerk bait. Colby loves to throw a Carolina rig. Nothing. Absolutely I, loves it. I. You'll find me in the bottom of the lake before you catch me throwing a Carolina rig for a oh. whole day. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I really I do. Hate, I my, so, hate it. So my dad, my dad, absolutely hates dragging around a Carolina rig, and it's a great man. His <laughs> his brother in law. My uncle, they used to fish tournaments back in the 90s. And uh, he would want, uh, this is, he bought a champion. It was a 90 champion. And all they had was a flasher, like a Lawrence flasher. And they would they would go off of a map and be like, okay, this is a good, this is a good, you know, point, a long point or whatever. And um, they would go out there and my dad's got to have something to throw at. My uncle could go off throw I mean this was before spot lock or anything they would throw an anchor or hook up to a tree and uh, he would throw a Carolina rig and he would drag a Carolina rig all day long and my dad was like no I hate this so then we went to Conroe one day and I was like look this is all we're having on the front deck of the boat deep crankbaits Carolina rigs and we we might do like some like shaky heads and Texas rigs and some brush piles and um, I think he ended up catching like a four pounder or something we were just playing around and uh, I think I caught like a five he caught a four and a three and then we caught some other little fish too and um, 90% of the day we were throwing a Carolina rig and I was like look this is uh, so boring yeah me and Colby, one of the first fun. tournaments, we was that the first tournament we fished together? I think it was the second. Maybe I the, think second. It was the second English Quest tournament, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it was really cold outside, and the only way we could catch a fish was on a Carolina rig. Oh, Colby refused to throw it. I, threw, I threw, <laughs> threw a Texas rig all day. From the like, from the time that I felt the bite, it was about a minute before I was able to set the hook or they wouldn't have it fully. Like, they would just barely nip at it, nip at oh, it, yeah. nip at it. And then, like, literally from the time I felt the first bump, it was like 30 to 45 seconds until I was able to set the hook. Mm. It was crazy. It was so boring. But that was the only way. We caught a limit. Barely. It <laughs> <laughs> was like nine pounds. It was, it was a limit. Yeah. That's, that, was yeah, a that's limit. Hey, when we first started fishing tournaments, just five fish, five keepers was Dude, a big thing. No, at yeah. that point, when we first started, we were like, we were just trying to break double digits. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. We were, 10 even was the goal. <laughs> we had like 10.05 oh, one time. We were like, yeah. Yeah, we came in dead last. We were like, suck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, we didn't you want get, some of this? Yeah, we were out there just having fun to be Bro. around with you. Yeah. Dude, it, I, remember, I, dude I remember that. That day it sucked. It was 18 degrees and raining. Oh, beautiful. Or it felt like 18 I feel years. like we've had a lot of days like that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't help whenever your tournament Martin, series goes through. March, January, Creek. February. Oh, yeah, Martin Creek. Martin Creek. I didn't, I didn't run that I think Ron had the worst time because he – so he was all the way in the back at the discharge, and mm. I think he stayed there on that one spot. But then he had – the week before, he had his boat in the shop for something, and then he gets out there and – I mean, it was pouring down rain, cold, so it was a power plant lake, so it was super foggy. You couldn't see nothing. Dude, it was bad. Yeah, yeah. so uh, Ron's out there, and you know Ron, he's, I think that day he got in the boat with like six Red Bulls, and <laughs> six or, I don't know, yeah. I seen him with a big box of Red Bulls, and he, he went through all of them, and uh, he was, his lighter was wet, and he was having a bad day. And, uh, Can't get the smokes on. Yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, to top that off, he ended up having electrical issues, and 
he finally was able to jump or change a battery over or something and get back to the to the ramp but that was i mean you were driving across the lake and you could like you lost feelings feeling in your hand like you just it was so bad bro uh, me and so when we came in we came in a little early cuz we needed to set up for weigh in and everything and it was a really good day for us we we caught uh, we ended up weighing in 16 pounds. I had like yeah. a six pounder, four pounder, and a couple of keepers, you know. And it ended up being a good day. I was throwing a white swim jig. And for some reason, like, we were literally following behind Chandler and Austin. Yeah. They were catching dinks. We were catching dinks the whole way down yeah. the bank. And then they ended up leaving and going somewhere else. Well, me and Brendan just turned around and fished back. And for some reason, when we fished back, I threw up there, caught a six. I threw up there again, caught a four. Like back to back, it was crazy. And I think anyway, I caught, I think I caught like a three pound crappie on a six XD. <laughs> nice, there's yeah. some big crappies out there. Yeah, man, you love six XDs. Oh, dude. Yeah. I, if if I could take, if I could like just have three rods on the boat, it would be a six XD. It'd be, man, it'd jerk be a. Bait. It would definitely be a jerk bait. <laughs> I know. Um, because I think what two years ago I fished. San Rayburn and got 17 and a half pounds or whatever on a jerk bait. And then I took that to Cedar Creek. I took that to uh, Belton. Um, I took that to. Uh, I think that's going to be a goal of mine stuff. this year is to catch more fish on a jerk bait. I really, really haven't caught a whole lot. I mean, I have caught fish on jerk baits, but uh, the, actually the first fish I ever live scoped was on a jerk bait. Which Dude, cool. I get so like persuaded being in the boat with Zach because like he'll pick up a jerk bait at, I don't know, the first cast of the day and then he'll be pulling in fish left and right. And I can pick up the same color jerk bait. He can pick the same rod up. Yeah, and I dude, I can throw it all day, and I won't get a single bite. I don't know, dude. It's just something you gotta get like, get used to. I wanna, I think I'm gonna make that my mission is this year is to catch some more fish on jerk bait. I'm gonna try to catch a frog in the dead of winter. Colby will throw a frog anywhere. Like it doesn't matter. I got blown. Dude, I'll get blown up on it. Ninety five percent of the time that I throw it, he does. He's he's, he's just a wizard with the frog, man. It's a... It doesn't have to be grass. It doesn't have to be nothing. Mm-hmm. It could be out in the middle of open water. He will get a blow up on it. It might not be a bass. <laughs> like I don't, I don't. You know what I mean? Like they don't commit to it. But like, I think they'll, they'll come up. Yeah, I think my third, third bait would be a spinner bait. Mm. And I know, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people in our group hate spinner baits. I don't know if I ever thrown one in a tournament. To be honest with you, really? I don't think so. I uh, I have mixed emotions about spinner baits. Well, that's what I caught twenty four pounds on on Choke Canyon. That's true. If I had to pick between like a any type of moving bait, it'd probably be a chatter bait. Chatter baits are cool. So my three baits would be the underspin, mm-hmm. of course. It'd have to be some type of just Texas rig. I can't yeah. get away. Probably a trick worm or something. And then the third one, this is hard. Used to it was a drop shot. But I don't know anymore. So I've started picking up on the drop shot. Yeah. So I'm throwing a six XD, a Carolina rig, and a drop shot, right now. Hmm. But you finish up. You, you, you. Oh, my, so, th- my third one. So, so is Texas that what it rig, was? Texas rig, uh, underspin. But I tell you what, a top water is pretty sweet too. Yeah, I, I want to lean towards a frog, really. I was about to say, that's probably just going to be all three of mine. No, I'm just kidding. I want to <laughs> lean towards a frog. I'm going to say frog. Three, yeah. three frogs yeah. on a crankbait rod, <laughs> yeah, a flipping stick. Yeah, you can put it on a spinning rod. I'll you got your it. hollow bodies. You got <laughs> your, yeah, exactly. <laughs> your realistic. The props, yeah, exactly. No. Uh, I'd probably have to go with... I'll take a Texas ring, just because... Do you have to specify? It's pretty universal. Do you have to specify bait? Like lure that you're going to put on there? Texas, you, rig, Texas, Texas rig? Texas I'll, okay, I'll leave it at that. Uh, Texas rig, and then let me get a... It'd probably be like a Bama bug or whatever. What? Or a banjo that? minnow. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, what's that uh, Guggen? Oh, a bandito bug? Oh, a bandito bug, yeah. No. That's what Chandler and Austin, they, were, they swear up and down with it. And I'm like, dude, that, this stuff's junk. They're, they're not bad. Like on the back of a jig, they honestly aren't bad. Like the little the kickers at the end, they actually have some pretty good action. I will right. say, but that's about all I use it for. Like I don't, uh, I've never bought one, so give it a try. 
You know, just once I while. like the what six cents the stroker crawl or yeah, those are nice. Sure. I probably take honestly. I've had I take a fluke. Mm. A fluke, okay. I take a fluke. What else? Uh, a frog a fluke and a Texas rig. No Texas, no my my lure on the Texas rig is a fluke. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll throw a Texas rig belly weight whatever you I'll, I'll do that. Uh, second would probably have to be a square bill. Mm. Yeah, yeah, left that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then obviously a frog. Frog. Yep. Yeah. If we Man, had to, you know, to rank two those, things, frog number one. Like I said, I'm gonna try to throw a jerk bait more this year, and the second thing I think I want to make myself throw more is a jig, like just a flipping jig or you know, like I don't throw them enough. That's a confidence bait though, man. Like if you have confidence in a jig, like you can go out there and wax them. Yeah, and so I don't. so Lake of the Ponds uh, was actually my first time ever catching anything on a football headed jig, mm. on a football jig. So I threw it all the time. Um, but I never, I never had any confidence in it. I have one tied on every tournament. I just, if I'm, if I'm looking at what I have tied on, like on the, on the deck, it's a Texas rig or a jig. I'm picking up the Texas rig just because I have more confidence in it. Right. Like, you know, I heard Seth Fighter talking about Texas rigs and jigs and he said, always throw a Texas rig in practice and in the same areas you would throw a jig. Right. But so throw the Texas rig in practice to, to see what, you know, if there's going to be bites there or kind of like this, more or less the size of the fish. But he said in the day of the tournament, do the same exact pattern, but just throw the jig because the, the big fish is going to bite the jig first, whereas the Texas rig, it may get picked up by the smaller ones in the area, you know. Because like, it's a bigger presentation. It's whatever about it, the big fish are going to bite the jig first. I mean, I'll throw it. I don't know if the docks are ready for me, but I'll throw it. Boats and let's just stick with the Texas. <laughs> Bro, this no, dude I, I stay away, I, every I stay dog. Away, I stay away from the boats, man. But if you got, if there's a piece of wood on the dock that's hanging down a little bit, oh, I'm teeing it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, my dad. You know like, those little me and my roosters. Dad don't even try. We don't even try. But we'll flip under like Cedar Creek. We were there the other week. We were flipping underneath some of the docks, and he would get to the second post, and he would hit it. T like squared up, yep. and he uh, he's like, well, I just can't get back there, and I'm like, I'm not even gonna try. Oh, try to throw a square bill back in there? You kidding me? I'll try <laughs> skipping a square bill. Does not go well. No, I bet <laughs> it not. does not I go well. Not. I lose a lot, bro. You know the the roosters with the northeast southwest, yeah. like the little vein, uh, whatever yeah. wind vanes, whatever you call them. Yeah, this dude hit one of them on top of the boathouse. Like, how do you even get up the? I, oh, I <laughs> lost it in the sun. <laughs> lost it in the sun. <laughs> that was a night tournament. No, I was kidding. No, but I, lo- I lost it. I really did. Yeah, you want to lose a bunch of baits? Fish a night tournament. I, I, I do. He fishes a lot of night tournaments. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But do you still lose a bunch of baits? No, I, I don't. I don't honestly think, other than the square bills that or the hybrid hunters that me and you lost that one time, I haven't lost that many. Oh, really? Mm-mm. I just flip Texas rigs, bro. Like, I don't do nothing else but Texas rigs. That's probably the, the smartest I and do safest. I do underspins. Like, like when, okay, here's my theory on, and don't take my theory because I don't really no, we catch will. very many fish on night tournaments. <laughs> but just like a swim jig or an underspin the first couple times through the light. If you, if you start getting bit, keep doing it. Maybe change up some moving baits. If you don't get bit, Texas rig. And then just keep on jerk bait, underspin, Texas rig, you know, or square bill, jerk bait, underspin, Texas rig. Like you just kind of go through that progression. And mm-hmm. every square bill or crank bait, or really every bait that I've thrown out in that tournament, I've hooked something other than a fish. Yeah, there's one on the flag in Connor right now. I can tell you that much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Missed the mark on that one. Mm. I literally couldn't see it. No, yeah. Some of them are like pitch black. Yeah. And there's just one light in the water, and it's like, well, hope I can make it to here. <laughs> I did catch one on the top water though. That yeah, light. Oh yeah, yeah that was fun. sweet. Yes, sir, man. Mm-hmm. Well, so what is the uh, what's the tournament you're looking forward to the most this year? Man, this year. Mm. Do you know the list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just making sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm. I'm kind of cool. I'm kind of happy that uh, Fayette got back put that got put back on, but we it was it's just a small lake, but it, we had a lot of fun out there. For sure, um, it was uh, it was pretty sweet. Uh, but I definitely am looking forward to Toledo Bend. 
Um, Toledo is going to be a nice one, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the last time we were there, it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> but this sucked. year, hopefully it's going to be, hopefully we draw it in a good time. Yeah. Of the I think year. I won that one, right? Yeah. You won it with four pounds. <laughs> yeah, I was like, big fish, like 1.3. Yeah, yeah. We had four entries. You won it with four pounds. I got second place with two pounds. And Chandler and the other people just didn't weigh in. Yeah. It was a great tournament. Dude, I'm looking forward to Tyler again, man. I really, Ty- yeah, I Tyler, really enjoyed like Tyler last year. Yeah, Tyler was pretty fun. I think what we fished that one uh, January, right? What, this last year, this year. I think it was January. Uh, uh, yeah, like Tyler, J- January. Yeah, so my dad ended up uh, first time we ever went out there. Uh, I think we stayed the night and we fished two night or two days, and he ended up the second day catching a. Uh, like a five and a half pounder, and uh, on some grass. Well, then we were throwing spinner baits and jerk baits, and then come practice uh, the week, the Friday before the tournament or whatever. Um, I got on a pattern where it was uh, boat ramps, and uh, on both sides, what is it, east and west, whatever. Um, it was running north and south, yeah. Yeah, so I got a, on a pattern on both sides. Um, the day before the tournament. Well, then I think we had a front or something come through uh, that that day or that night and uh, totally screwed the pattern up. Um, and I think we fished like two or three spots that only had fish on it and I think we weighed in four fish. I don't remember. Uh, three two, fish? Two. two fish? Two fish. Mm. For five point two, that's it. No, I have fun. I mean, we literally had all of our bites within what a thirty minute window of each other. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, what did we kind of start off slow in the morning? We didn't start. Yeah, so you can call it slow, but <laughs> we can catch a single. No, we fish. got we got some bites early. Did we? And I lost a good one because uh, Brendan was me and Brendan. Uh, well, I, I say it was because we were on the phone with Brendan. I, I was on the phone with Brendan. It was on that first. I didn't set the too. hook very. I didn't set the hook well enough. It was definitely and, because of Brendan. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying too. I just blame everything on Brendan. That happened to the boat. Between. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do as well. Yeah, he's not even there. <laughs> yeah, damn it, Brendan. Damn Brendan. <laughs> Bro, I remember. I think this was at Conroe. Uh, Dylan had found out that they were biting on a faster drop on a Texas rig, right? So. Like just using a little heavier weight, and like he had found that out. Like you skip all the way to the back, and they like it would drop really fast, and they were keying on that more than like a smaller weight where it would be a slower drop. And so I was talking to Brent, and Dylan had told me and Brendan both this, and then Brendan was like, "I'm going to Academy to get some heavier weights. You need anything?" I was like, "No, nah, man. I pretty much got what I need." And uh, he was like, "I'm gonna get some half ounce weights." I'm like, "Bro, half ounce?" Or no, maybe he said one ounce. He probably did. No, one ounce. a half ounce is pretty reasonable, but no, he said a one ounce. He's like, I'm gonna get some one ounce. I'm like, what are you trying to do? Punch through the dock? Jeez. <laughs> get some one ounce weights. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's always a good time, with Brendan. No man, for sure. Me and him have gotten in many a fight. So, uh, <laughs> like, so we had okay. So the story of me and Brendan, we fished together the whole first season. We fished together on Belton and on Cedar Creek last year. And then, uh, then he bought a boat, and then so he, and, him, and Squeak were fishing together, and then me and Colby started fishing together after that. But Cedar Creek was the last tournament me and Brendan fished together, and um, in the luck of the draw, we fished after that. But I think y'all knew that y'all were gonna split up, yeah. And y'all yeah. fought more. We fought more on Belton and, <laughs> and Cedar, Cedar Creek, Creek than we had any other time. Yeah, but we fought a lot anyway, yeah. even just in general. Yeah, but. Uh, but so he knew he was going to get a boat. Well, like, but, and I'm used to making all the decisions, right? And I'm like, I ask him like, Hey, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And boat. But like, I'm like, if I get something in my head, like that's what I want to go do. Or if we need to go practice for something, well, he gets it in his head that we want to, he wants to go way up North and the lake's already super low. I don't know how to run it. Like I'm not going way up North where there's stumps and all this, whatever, you know? And, uh, he's like, I'm telling you, bro, the big fish are up North. And I'm like, oh, we don't really want to, I don't really want to go up north. You know, let's figure out down south, you know, it's a super long run. 
And he's like, like he just basically is fighting me about wanting to go up north. And I was like, bro, when you get your own boat, you can go north to Canada if you want to. But until you do, like, we're fishing down here. And he's like, oh, I will. He's like, I'm going to come in. And when you see me bringing in uh, 30 pounds, 30, 40 pound bags, then you're really going to regret it. And then, like, then I start messing with him. I'm like, bro, I weigh in, I weigh in four, uh, what did I say? I weigh in uh, 45, 45 pound bags all the time. And he's like, no, you do not. 45-pound bags? I was like, dude, I weigh in 45-pound bags on a regular basis. And he was getting so mad. He was like, you've never weighed in a 45-pound bag. I was like, bro, a 4-5-pound to five pound bag to me is on a regular every day. <laughs> and he's getting just really frustrated. You've never even caught a fish big enough to catch a 45-pound bag. And I was like, no, 4 to 5 pounds. And he just, like, he was done with me. Oh, yeah. I love burning down. I think he just sat down after that. Yeah. It was like screwed. So that's, uh, I don't, hey man, wherever y'all put me, I'll put something in the water. Right? Yeah. Cole's just like, take me to a spot with water. Yeah. And I'll Jared's go, like, what do you think, man? Happen. Yeah, he'll always ask me, man. And he'll ask me, like, in the, we got like three hours left. He's like, well, what do you think? I'm like, shit, I don't know. Like, <laughs> bro, <laughs> what we're doing is not working out. So if we go somewhere else, like, true. Yeah. It's really hard for me to adjust, man. Like, if I get on a dock deal, like, it's really hard for me to get off that, even if it's yeah. not working, you know? Just because I know, like, we were catching them on docks, like, it's hard to adjust. So Maybe I, the I know, bite window is just I know I need. I know I need to, to do it, you know, and make those adjustments. It doesn't matter to me, man. Like, I mean, that was me and me and Bo fishing those night tournaments. Oh, yeah. Like, we would come in there and weigh in, like, one fish. Like, it's not like he, he wanted it for the AOI points and stuff like that. It's not like I was out there trying to win. I was like, I really just pay, you know, my 70 bucks to you and, or to Ron. Just come out here and hang out. Yeah, <laughs> I was right. like, I'm just paying to hang out with my friends at this yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt, man. Yeah, so Toledo Ben, yeah, that's going to be a good one. Um, I think Sam Raver is going to be a good one, too, depending on when we, when we try. Oh, I've given up hope on Sam Raven. I hope it's sooner or versus later. When we first started it. fishing, I could go to Sam Raver and we can catch some pretty good fish pretty consistently. Uh, Here lately, dude, and I know I haven't been in a while, but like when we were going, like the last few times we've been just absolutely sucked. Yeah. And I hope it's like during the winter uh, or early spring kind of thing. Uh, early spring didn't work out too good for us last year, did it? <laughs> yeah, it worked, it worked pretty good in practice. But that's how it goes for me. It's true. Yeah. It's just That's true, man. Because uh, what was after what was after Tyler? Houston? Yep. February. Houston. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then March was Rayburn. Mm-hmm. And then April was Livingston. Which Houston I I honestly I didn't mind Houston. Oh Houston straight up sucked. I I, I mean the, the fishing <laughs> Yes, like there was not any big bags weighed in, but I mean we had a good turnout. Yeah, no, we definitely like, we had, had a good, good turnout. Yeah. Like it was, I didn't mind it. I mean, I caught, we caught fish. Not all of them were keepers. I caught a flag. I do remember. I do remember that. Very it's a dope picture, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Oh uh, man, well, I uh, guess we can wrap this thing up. What uh, what else That's you got, Kobe? Right. You we, got to. We can get into the. The fan questions, the fan questions. Been, they've, been, they've been written in. There's really only one, oh, okay. uh, and it's going to be asked every, everybody on every podcast. Mm. Uh, so I mean, like the goat. The, what is your go-to boat snack? Because like for me and Jared, obviously, but nutter butters, nutter butters. butters. Yeah, our quick, payday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> that's his thing, dude. He'll take a payday and a Coke Zero. I'm like, God, what are you, 94? Hey, what's wrong, <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with that? Dude, payday should no. not be a candy. Payday and the Coke Zero, you sign me up, dude. I'm cool oh. with a Coke Zero, man, but a payday is there's so much better out there. Oh. But yeah, it's Nutter Butters, man, and it's just convenient. So, it's it's great. So the thing with with Nutter Butters is, I mean, it's chocolate, so it melts. It's peanut butter. It's not chocolate or, at all. It's, oh, <laughs> nut, Nutter Butter. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of uh, Reese's. No, what's the? I don't know what I'm thinking of, but no, the little peanut Hershey's. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I like nuts. That's the nutter butter. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A, it looks like a little peanut. Oh, you're thinking of a nutter bar? Uh, yeah, the chocolate like... with the wafer on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's no. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nutter butter comes in the red, the little peanut shaped one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Okay. So I mean, those are those are nice, right? But uh, I would say, um, 
I would just say like peanut butter crackers, like the Austin peanut butter crackers. Interesting. Okay. So, like um, a, so like a worse version of nutter butter. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, basically, yeah. Hey, yeah. Crackers are good. Crackers are good. Dude, I can't eat a cracker on a belt. Or like, um, uh, or like, uh, uh, what's the powdered donut is another big one. Oh me. golly. You remember Josh? <laughs> that was the funniest edit I've ever done. Oh yeah, Josh, so Josh. ate a whole dang bag by himself I'll that day. He ate a whole, da- a whole bag, but and like so while they he were idling sit, around, he would sit like, in front of the camera. Them. He would sit in front of the camera and eat, and eat one or two, and then he would go. So I made an edit to where like it was like him just one after the other, just yeah. like, and then I would play a couple clips of fishing, and it would go back to Josh just <laughs> eating some. And then he would like talk about random stuff, yeah. and then he would go back to eating donuts. Um, yeah. Or I would say either a pack of crackers or um, uh, like a snack stick, like a beef jerky snack stick with the cheese. Well, Slim Jim, huh? Yeah. Dude, I don't know. I got to be careful about what I eat on boats, man, because like you're in, exactly. Yeah. You're at limited access out there. Yeah. You about so. to. Get real close to beach in a boat or hey. going into weigh-in early. Where was that? Were we? Is that Conroe? Where I had to drop you off? <laughs> when we went all the way down the league line. Woo. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And <laughs> so you had to. Be, no, I thought it was Conroe. Yeah, yeah, and there was a porter party. Or yeah. Something. <laughs> oh man. I think it was like a park with people playing basketball. The <laughs> random porter party and just Jared walking from the lake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gotta, hey, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Right. We, dude, we were in the middle of a tournament, and I had drove on Rayburn, and I think we were fishing like Julie Creek or like Mud Creek or something, yeah. and it hit me all of a sudden, and mm. I went, I drove all the way back to Castle Boykin, and dude, and it was pouring raining, oh, yeah. and it was cold, and I just really had to go, and I'm like walking up the steps all the way to Castle Boykin, and it just every step was like the worst. Oh, and then man. you get there, you have your rain gear soaking wet. You have to like take that off the coveralls. Like, what was that? Uh, <laughs> that was Tyler when uh, that one guy said something to Dylan. No, oh, that was uh, that was Belton, wasn't it? Oh, Belton. Yeah. <laughs> Having any luck? <laughs> <laughs> that was Belton. I'm pretty sure, dude. That twice, <laughs> twice. <laughs> Dylan, uh, Dylan's a character. He will. Uh, yeah, I haven't been to that point yet. I haven't had to. Lean over the boat. Me neither. And you hear about people like the pros like talking about it like it's a normal thing. Like, Dude, yeah, who was it? Just uh, put the shifter down. And hold on to the the, the steering wheel. wheel. I'm like, uh, oh. damn it, on him. Uh, Matt, Matt Robertson. Matt Robertson. Thank you. Oh, he he yeah. gave a whole speech about it at his last weigh in. Oh man, <laughs> I've Matt. never I've never came to that point. Or Matt's I guess I have. Else. I just didn't do it. I had to go in for something. I would match something else because like, I. You, who else has a has a beer and dumps it into his shoe and drinks it? The the crazy part is though is that it's not an act. No, no, like you, no, you like you know like if you follow him on Instagram or like any social media, like he's like that from whenever he wakes up to whenever he goes to bed. Oh, every yeah. day. Yeah, which I respect it. Like, yeah. I mean, hey. like you're just being you. You're not. Trying to be somebody for the camera. That's right. No, but it's a. Uh, I don't know. Was it Swindell that had the baby wipes? The dude wipes. The dude wipes. <laughs> hey, I think he but, made like he made the dude wipes what they oh, are. Oh, he's sponsored by him now, oh, and I'm yeah. tr- I'm trying to get to that level. So oh, for real, dude wipes. Be, uh, <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So we may be sponsored by dude wipes in the future. We're definitely not going to be sponsored by Ducket Rods. <laughs> After we no. talked about that, no. heck no, we will not. But speaking if, of sponsors, if you know, I had check to, out some of our uh, great sponsors, you know, yeah. Southern, Southern Soul has some good food. Omnia has a, a great app. Um, go ahead and sign up for Premium Pro. Zach, if you haven't done that, bro, it's pretty nice. Not gonna lie, you gotta pay for it. Yeah, it's like twenty nine dollars for the year, right? We'll, we'll show you after this. Yeah, we have it. We're working on we're working on getting the video put together to where it. Yeah, the grand getaway if you're ever in uh, Branson, Missouri. Branson, Missouri on Lake uh, Table Rock. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They got a, a good place to stay. Um, if you need some tackle and you're looking to level up your tackle game. Nice. Level up tackle. See what you did there. <laughs> That's it. Uh, if you're having an AC mishap. Call ASAP. Call ASAP. That's right, man. 
uh, ASAP HVAC. We're a heating and cooling company in uh, Spring, Cleveland, um, Dayton area. But we service, you know, 95% of Texas. Yeah, pretty much. So, like, all the greater uh, Houston area. All the greater lake areas. Yeah. Oh, there, there's a lake close by. The greater though. Texas area. We're, yeah. We got you. For real. Uh, Conroe Night Series. Man, if y'all are looking for a good uh, night fishing series to fish, then uh, that's it on Lake Conroe. If you're looking for a good daytime series to fish, it's right here. We'll look at the draw. Look at the draw fishing, man. And yeah. uh, To go back to the Conroe Night Series thing, man, is that, like, I don't really think people will understand how much fun it is like i was trying to explain it to somebody at work the other day and they were like what does fishing in the night do and i was like no there's green lights that you can pull up to or you can just go sit offshore or like whatever floats your boat literally but uh and dude they just didn't understand it i was like it's one of those things that you really have to experience to get the full effects from see i feel like the conroe night tournaments it's solely based off of lights because me and my dad were fishing one and we went all the way up to caney and we were fishing at grass edge and we fished it for like three hours. Nothing. Dude. Went down to the lights and caught some fish. I, I will say the opposite about that. The first, I don't know, what, five or six that Bo and I fished together. If, Could not get a bite. Dude, if we threw at a single light, nothing. Mm-hmm. And then we would go into basically the pitches, like the darkest. Okay. Uh, the darkest corner that you could find oh, yeah. and throw up in there and we'd pull fish out of there left and right. That and overhead lights. Oh yeah, I was say it's a. Uh, I've caught them all different ways, dude. I've caught them in the dark. I've caught them on overhead lights. I've caught them on green lights, and it's never the same anytime I go. So it's always different. That's the cool thing about fishing night night tournaments. Um, it's just it's really unique and different every time you go. And it's really fishing in general, but it's just seems to be funner at night. Yeah. <laughs> you going Saturday? Probably not. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll we'll talk about it. I was text you about it. You never text me back. So yeah, because I'm not sure if I'm going to go or not. But it's up in the air, like. Yeah, we can talk about it. We see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, that's it. And uh, if you want some cool shirts, oh, if you want some cool Look at the Draw shirts, they're on our website. Go ahead and uh, snag a couple before they run out. Look at the draw fishing.com. Look at the draw fishing.com. You can register for a tournament now. It's, that's it. Dude, have you looked at it? Uh, no, I haven't. You need to. I, I've made it. I tried to make it nice. Yeah, go ahead and just take a look on the website. Sure, I'll just tell you. Cause that's normally what I do. Is just well, I, I mean, you can, you register can still register the day of, like everybody always does. But the register online is it's been it's been streamlined. It looks it looks nice now. It's a lot yes, more user friendly. Could you offer a discount? No, it's actually more expensive online. Cause oh. you have to pay the you have to pay uh, taxes. I think right. Golly, I don't think so. I think we avoided that, didn't we? Yeah. There's okay, there's we'll, an additional. We'll, we'll, we'll cut this out. There's a but. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll cut this. We'll, we'll stop. But there's a process. This. There's a credit card. Pro- that's what it is. The credit oh, card yeah, processing yeah. fee. Yeah, I mean that's gonna come with anything though. But it's yeah. only like four bucks, I think, or something yeah. like that. But no, I mean at that point it literally is uh, well, like guess, pre-registering. Well, yeah. Give me a discount. Yeah, sure. I can. Yo. But go ahead, subscribe to our podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, go look us up on Facebook. Uh, we have a group. We have a page. Look, you can figure out. You can find anything about Look of the Draw Fishing on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, anywhere you can get podcasts. Almost anywhere. We're not everywhere yet, but anyway, almost. almost uh, yeah. So to wrap it up, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll see y'all. See you later after Cedar Creek next time.